So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Trauma Chats video podcast edition, rant edition. Y'all knew I was coming. So I'm not even gonna make this video a long one. I just wanted to talk about some recent updates in regards to situations that I spoke on last week. I'm gonna go straight into it because I'm sure y'all just wanna hear what I have to say. So without further ado, Let's get right into this video. So y'all may know Erica Mena of Love & Hip Hop was recently called out for using what some people are calling a racial slur during a heated argument with her cast member Spice. Both ladies appear on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta show and things got really heated. Once Spice told Erica that her son didn't like her, Erica obviously was triggered. She ended up becoming irate, flipping the table, wanting to fight Spice and to put the cherry on top, she called Spice a monkey. A blue monkey. Now, there were a lot of people not only on social media, but even in my comment section when I spoke about Erica calling Spice a blue monkey, and they were saying either one, that is not a racial slur, or two, it's completely warranted because Spice spoke about her child. So just to debunk, it may not be a direct racial slur, such as the N-word with the hard R or something like that. But I think we all know that that comment had a very racist undertone and it was meant to racially offend Spice. Erica has a history of calling people monkeys and also being racist. I broke that down in my last video, so make sure you check it out if you haven't already. But yeah, let's not be oblivious. One thing I can't stand about the internet are those of y'all who make excuses for your faves. Like, just be honest. There's a lot of people who I like in the media who do things that I don't like, and I have to be honest about their actions, even if I like them or their work or their art or whatever. And in regards to people saying that what Erica said was warranted because Spice brought up her child, I mean, yes, I do think that Erica was free to clap back at Spice. I just feel like her clap back was completely inappropriate and very disrespectful and it was meant to be that's why she said it however like i said in my last video erica brought a gun to a knife fight spice didn't come in soft spice was initially irritated you can tell that erica even seemed to perceive the situation as a pending positive conversation until it flipped spice had underlying energy boiling up during that discussion and she struck erica where it hurt and because erica didn't see it coming that's why she went below the belt but that doesn't make it right also i feel like people are saying that spice didn't speak on erica's kid she spoke on Erica's parenting. If y'all want to be so technical with the nuances, then be my guest. But y'all know if somebody was to bring up anything about your parenting in relation to your kid and their feelings, you wouldn't like it. There were so many people on there saying, oh, well, all she did was talk about her parenting skills and said that her child doesn't like her. And my thing is, would you be okay if somebody told you that your child doesn't like you? And I understand the history. These are things that Erica alluded to or said in regards to her situation with her son. However, that doesn't mean that someone's going to like to hear it from the other person. And as ladies, and no, I'm not a mom, but I'm pretty sure those of you who are watching that are moms, you wouldn't want to hear that from somebody. Let's be real. So because of this incident, VH1, Mona Scott, and Love & Hip Hop franchise have now fired Erica Mena. And this is actually shocking. So let me start off by saying this. I was very wrong. There was somebody who commented and they said, you shouldn't tell people that Erica won't be fired. Encourage people to make their complaints known to MTV and Mona Scott. Your statement was very disappointing. You're influencing black women to not use their power and their voices. And no, I was not influencing black women to not use their voices. I mean, I always do, but I did get what this commenter was saying, but I have used my platform to encourage the cancellations and terminations of many problematic people. And from years of doing commentary, I usually don't see that much change with outrage. If it's dealing with something racist in recent times, I have been seeing a lot of people getting fired for being racist Karens and all of that stuff. But the precedent that had been set in regards to this never really warranted that much. But in this case, I will admit that I was wrong because I did respond and say, if and when she's fired we shall see she's not going to be fired if she's already done this before and if vh1 aired it then they don't care and then she actually gets fired so kudos to this commentator seems that it actually did happen and i didn't think it would happen but here we are so because of this incident erica mena has now been fired so the love and hip-hop instagram page decided to make a statement about this in the midst of all the backlash that erica mena was getting they said the love and hip-hop franchise has never shied away from hard conversations in our community working hand in hand with our partners viewers will see the the impact of Erica Mena's remarks played out in the final three episodes of the season. Effective immediately, she will not appear in the next season of Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. And when I tell you, I didn't think this would happen, but I still feel like they didn't necessarily fire her on the basis of their against racism. They fired her on the basis of, we don't want that smoke from the public. If it would have never played out like this on social media, Erica Mena would not have been fired, in my opinion. So of course, a lot of people were talking about this. It got reposted on all of the other blogs. And there were people who really didn't like like what Erica said and maybe they felt like she should be fired but they don't agree with the way that she was fired for very obvious reasons. I mean 
how can you film, edit, promote, and air a show that you know that these comments were made? And then when you get backlash that maybe they thought wouldn't be this severe, now they're trying to act like they're for the people and that her termination was justified under the guise of anti-racism. This is not about anti-racism. Mona Scott even decided to take to her Instagram story and say, handled. And Mona, girl, relax. You didn't handle anything. You let the internet do your job and force your hand. Erica Mena is one of the longest running cast members on the franchise. You did not want to fire her. I'm pretty sure when you guys called her, y'all said, we're sorry that we have to do this, but due to measures beyond our control, we're going to have to let you go and not renew your contract for next season due to the social media backlash that we're receiving about your comments, which if we're being real is horseshit. Let's get into these tweets that support why this is an unimpactful win. It's a win, but the impact isn't there because the motivation for this was not genuine. So a commenter said, the crazy part is when Mona made this franchise, she said she wanted for it to be black growth. Yes, it's been crazy stuff, but to allow a colorist to have camera time still after those moments just for reactions makes Mona look worse, 100. Because she and her production crew have the power to say, we can no longer film with you no more, but y'all still continued, 100. Someone else said, love and hip hop full of ish. Erica Mena wasn't fired until the scene played out on TV. Another person said, y'all Y'all ask for drama, get the drama, then be outraged. A lot of us in our daily lives say all kinds of reckless, foolish, and below the belt things without justifiable reason too, such as kids being talked about, etc. But wanna go so hard on the next person? I don't know. Another commenter said, if children are where the line is drawn, saying Spice should have gotten the same treatment, you know how many cast members would be gone from all seasons if kids are the deal breaker in arguments on the show? Let's be real, and Erica is a repeat offender in this same category. And someone was being funny by saying, Erica Mena got a feed her kids please don't do this to her then someone else said love and hip-hop is so fake because that episode has been recorded and edited but now you chose to fire erica after it's aired make it make sense she should have been fired and then in response to that someone else said love and hip-hop filmed erica mena using the slur months ago did green screens about it after still decided to air it on national tv but just fired her girl they kept that slur situation in for promotion and viewership that's wicked work but they ate that while i still feel spice started it and Erica responded and both are wrong because ain't no rule. Racism has consequences sometimes. And another user added that unpopular opinion, that ish with Erica Mena and Spice was some BS. The way they trying to spin that storyline into some colorism ish is beyond me. Erica's comments, without a doubt inappropriate and beneath the belt, but I feel the same about Spice. And then someone even added love and hip hop and said, at love and hip hop is dead wrong for canceling Erica Mena. Spice needs to be canceled too, cause she dead wrong for talking about her kids. Erica was calm, Spice knew what was gonna happen. That's why she acted like that. And then lastly, I think the general consensus was someone saying, so love and hip hop aired the episode and then fired Erica. LOL, that'll make a lick of sense. They could have kept that scene away from the public if that's the case. So overall, is anyone else just a little bit conflicted? Because I do think that she should have been fired and I think her being fired is the best choice. But at the same time, I believe the way that she was fired doesn't really give the punch that it's supposed to. Let me know if some of y'all are feeling that way too. Because I just felt like if they could shoot this footage, edit it, do confessionals, obviously the next few episodes from what they previewed show the cast reaction to what what she said and y'all are even airing it you're trying to make this narrative and then when it got too much and you couldn't take the heat inside the kitchen now you want to come with the extinguishers that you really could have just prevented it all seems very shady like maybe i'm being too picky part of me is happy that she was reprimanded and faced some type of repercussions for her actions but the other side of me is like i know it's not because of genuine concern so did you really do anything overall i feel like erica mena is going to get hired to do something else i don't know what she's into and what businesses that she has but either way at the very least she was fired erica i hope you learned your lesson beloved now the second half of this video is going to kind of be a rant slash response to some heat that i caught on other platforms and i'm going to be a thousand percent honest if other people can use a false narrative to capitalize off of my stuff i damn sure will use this backlash per se and capitalize off of it as well so last week i made a video talking about tiktok npc influencer pinky doll the internet was shocked to see that she does not appear as light as she is in her social media videos when we saw her at the streamies award and I just want to add, there are way too many of you talking about, oh, she's lighter skin and she just has a summer tan. Can y'all stop with the delusion? Stop and actually just be honest that what you're seeing is not what you're getting. The girl is a brown skin girl. She probably has a little bit of a tan from being outside, maybe, but she's not light skin. She's not multiracial. She is a brown skin black woman who used the filter to play a character and it attracted more viewers and virality because her appeal was different than what she actually looks like. That is the end of the story. And then it's like somebody always thinks, 
thinks that she's this marketing genius. I don't think she thought that hard about this. I don't think her intentions was even to do any trickery. I think she did something, got lucky, it was working, she went viral, and now here we are. So I feel like this is blown out of proportion because Twitter is such a dramatic place. I don't use Twitter that often, but this summer I picked up my frequency of tweeting. And I usually stay away from Twitter because I feel like the narratives and the think pieces that happen on Twitter are always so extreme. And I feel like a lot of the controversy that has transpired on the internet over the years directly stems from people being messy on Twitter. Things go viral on Twitter and then it cascades to Instagram, TikTok, and obviously YouTube as well. So when I made my thumbnail for that video, I thought it was just ironic that she played into a somewhat reversal of colorism, even though there's no such thing as reverse colorism. But she was able to garner benefits from her skin tone that she doesn't even have. And so when I said ice cream so black, that was in response to people assuming that she was biracial or maybe to some people she was super light skinned, but I thought she was biracial when I initially saw her videos. And there's a lot of people that are saying like, well, if you went and looked at her other social media, you would have known that she isn't very fair skinned. But honestly, I'm not into NPC content. So when I saw her, I only saw the TikTok that was reposted to Twitter. I never actually went to go see much about Pinky Doll because let's be real, she's not my cup of tea. I'm not interested in that type of content. I could care less. It's not like she put on makeup or bleached her skin. It's literally a filter. It's not real. So she's not harming anyone. I don't care. So I made a thumbnail. I said ice cream so black. She always talks about ice cream so good and makes all of these weird mannerisms. So the fact that she's actually black is the reason why I said she's black. Because my interpretation of her was that she was multiracial, especially because she had an accent and I wasn't too sure where she was from. So this Twitter user by the name of at on God F Kevin. I don't even know what type of username this is, but he decides to screenshot my thumbnail from YouTube, crop out my name, crop out anything related to my channel and post it with a caption that says, y'all, dot, 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 dot. And then to make matters worse, he decided to be messy by leaving a little part of the screenshot that says, impressive viewers also watch this channel. So there were so many people saying that, of course, this was an impressive video. She so this and she so that. And I'm like, I didn't even know that people disliked impressive. I like impressive channel. However, we are two completely different commentators. So why he decided to leave that little piece in there was to be messy because if you couldn't credit me for being the person who made the thumbnail and allowing your followers to go view the video and see that it wasn't a messy video, then why leave that aspect in there to throw shade at another commentator who didn't even make the video? Impressive was catching strays for absolutely no reason. So shout out to all of y'all that sent me this, was tagging me, was trying to give me my credit because yesterday was supposed to just be a chill day for me. But of course, my phone kept going going off about this nonsense. I finally saw it and when I went through a lot of the quote tweets, a lot of people were calling me racist and a lot of people were calling me colorist because people assumed that whoever made this thumbnail was doing so to be malicious and not really thinking about the fact that y'all had no context. All you had was a messy Twitter user who said, y'all, dot, 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 who didn't even watch the video himself, but for clout, clicks, views, and attention, jumped to pushing their truth that wasn't even there. So once I saw it, I decided to respond to this user and I said, okay, but did you even watch my video before you posted my thumbnail? Because your theory versus what I said doesn't match. I spoke about how colorism is a true reality, the irony of a darker woman fooling the internet by using a skin tone filter, and I didn't badmouth Pinky Doll not once. And my thing is like, I didn't encourage her, but I also didn't drag her. And then my DMs, I was like, why am I catching this heat? Like, did you even check out the video before you talk mess? Obviously not. Decides to respond back to me with no apology, no accountability, just an excuse. He says, I'll be honest, I saw the part at the bottom saying that impressive viewers watch your channel and automatically assume the worst paired with the ice cream so black part. So your disdain for another commentator made you have a lapse of judgment about the intention and the validity of a piece of content that you didn't even watch. This is why not everybody deserves a voice. I don't know who this individual is, but the tweet had over 2 million views. So yeah, my phone was going off. And again, thank you to those of you who talked to me, tweeted me. There were a few of you that were reposting the link to the actual video for people to actually watch it before they dragged me. And I appreciate that. But then I go on Instagram. And the user by the name of Nate Clips P decides to also repost this viral tweet to his thousands of followers and the comments weren't so nice either. It's like, damn, it was never that deep, like never. I actually really appreciated this because now the views on that video have gone up. I've sent the link out to quite a few different people who were naysayers and all that did was bring people to this channel. So if you're new, hi, hello, and wanna welcome. My name is Chama. I like to do social commentary on viral and trending topics and speak about the social life of young black women across the world. I choose to take a more satirical yet informative route because I'm funny but I like to be smart and informative as well and because of that all I can say is if you ain't got no haters you ain't popping have a great night y'all I'll wear you babe today will you come and free my mind come
And baby, don't waste no time So wish you down for me Cause this can really go down Talk about something else, what's going what's on? That? Went to school, got a degree, I always say it in my song Nigerian parents raised me by the book right. And now look, big stage, heavyweight, uh-huh. money day, uh-huh. business uh-huh. good Model girls always looking pretty, just like how they should I know it's haters saying that I started acting Hollywood This is how you get when you know you finally getting good And this is how you act when it's people to get out the hood Yeah, <laughs> shout out Team Cheeks Kim, Murray, Chi, Ray, Nance, Jade, and Dominique Sorry I ain't been back, but my talent's an anomaly And R.I.P. my cousin Mike, I know he would be proud of me This little and elbows cause now I'm getting out of reach Tiptoeing to the top and I ain't even try to creep They like it when I preach and trust me baby I ain't for the week Jones acting like me trying to leash but I just want peace New school rapper but my style's really antique He liking what he see Yeah daddy come and take a seat uh, Yeah daddy come and take a seat with me QC cause I might be falling deep